Um, what would you all do to get businesses to hire people with marijuana in their system? City tax credit and stuff for businesses that hire these types of people. So, first part of that question, what would you all do to get businesses to hire people with um, marijuana in their system? So, obviously, if they're doing the drug testing. Um, and then, uh, City tax credit and cover businesses that hire these people. To be honest, I've never smoked marijuana. I've never used it. Okay? I'm not opposed to it. It's just something I've never done. So, I'm going to come and answer this question based on a position of a little bit of ignorance. So, if I have alcohol in my system and I apply for a job, I can't show up and expect to be hired if I'm drunk. Having said that, with marijuana, I, I'm unsure. I don't understand if maybe I've smoked marijuana three weeks earlier and it's still in my system, right? So I, I don't want to equate it to, I don't want to make that near to reaction and say, hey, well, it's just like being drunk, so, you know, I'm not gonna hire that person. So I would need to do some research on that topic, okay? I would need to understand, is this going to affect this person's job performance? In my job, if I show up sober and I go home and choose to drink, that's my right. It's legal. Just like marijuana is legal, so if somebody chooses to go home and use it, that's their right. But they still have to come to work ready to go, right? So if you come to work high, I'm not on board with that. If it's in your system, from three weeks ago, but it's not affecting your job performance. I'm more than willing to look and listen to see what the best course of action is to take. Uh, as far as tax credits, I, I think I would have to look at that. I think that there's possibly other ways to incentivize uh, our businesses to hire people. I'd like to look at their qualification and skill set first and find out other ways to do that. Thanks. Graphic packaging was at the city commission meeting, and it was uh, one of the reasons I love Bobby Hope because these executives around graphic packaging are sitting on the podium asking for a tax break, and our mayor stood up there and said, "So, uh, what reassurance can I have that you're going to make sure that you ask people with felony record to have, give them a chance to explain their felony record before you turn them down just because they checked the box and they have been convicted of a felony before?" He challenged them to say. You know, what are you going to do to make sure that you're hiring local people? But, but I was particularly proud of him for, for advocating for our community for the, the felony box uh, check mark and, and kind of challenging them on that regard. But the same way I, I look at it is with marijuana as well. I think, I think what uh, the question is probably referring to is people with trace amounts in their system, right? So, you know, I smoked a joint three weeks ago and it's still in my system. And so you're not going to give me a job because I did that three weeks ago. And I think that there are ways that the city could approach that. And in the same way that, that Bobby challenged the company about a felony record checkbox and not uh, discounting people who might have had a felony record 20 years ago who served their time and are productive citizens and proving that they're uh, doing great things in their community and want to get a hardworking job. I think the same should be true with people with trace amounts of marijuana in their system. And so uh, I think there are ways where the city can say, you know, we want to work with people who uh, you know, aren't going to judge somebody just because they have a trace amount of something in their system. Yeah. There's no blanket answer. I don't think it would be right to have a blanket answer to that question, because I have so many questions. You talked about weed being in somebody's system. What if it's a medicinal reason, right? They're gonna have weed in their system regularly if they go home and take a, an edible or if they you know, smoke when they get home. It's not gonna take off. So it can't just be having weed in their system. I think there has to be a way to ask these questions. I'm not, I'm really not for just blanket statements or blanket policies because when you do that, you take out the ability to ask people what the situation was, what's going on, why are you smoking, or why are you, you know, just oh, a plethora of different things. So I'm definitely open to finding out if there's ways in which people who smoke or who have to use marijuana for a 
medicinal or for whatever reasons, can be able to function regularly in society. Um, and whatever those answers may be, I don't have them right now, but I'm absolutely willing to open the mind out. Thank you. 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 So I want to say, like, this actually, it, this hits really close to me. A lot of my neighbors, a lot of the people that I've organized, especially in my neighborhood, many of them are working class people who work downtown and the restaurants and businesses that basically keep the gears of the city turning. And I've heard many stories since the legalization of marijuana about how um, they're going to drug test me. I even people who have a car. Um, and my employment with this company might depend on that. Now, of course, we want to have common sense things. You, don't, you show up drunk for work, or you show up you know, baked out of your board. Yeah, you should you know, probably not keep that job to really try to think about what you're doing. But again, you know, we're talking about uh, a lot of businesses have these blanket policies about uh, THC in your system that are basically still from um, an era when this was you know, classified as a, you know, a felonious drug here in the state of Michigan. That needs to change immediately, and the city has a lot that it can do to put pressure on these businesses to not unjustly, uh, you know, use THC and uh, marijuana testing to, uh, you know, keep people from employment or to just objectively fire people who, you know, again, you know, uh, cannabinoids stay in your system for uh, weeks at a time. So, uh, you know, it could have been this morning, it could have been two weeks ago. Uh, something else I really wanted to talk about too, just how do we ensure that? I think what we can do, um, we need uh, a lot of my platform talks about building a feedback loop between city policy and working class work organizing. I think that could be part of a kind of workers' rights uh, package that the city could work on uh, to not only foster uh, union development in those industries, but also have actual city policy that enforces it. I think that's what. That would be a concrete solution to help make sure that people who smoke, like myself, at the end of the day, um, need to relax and get all the campaign stuff out of their head. <laughs> 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 when they show up with a pot in their system and if the NCA would test them, they're not allowed to compete. That said, uh, I support everyone's right to do it. Uh, I would look at the particular job that needs to be performed. Do I want my Uber driver high? You know, I do, so I, I think that it's, it's an individual and we have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis, but I do think that's a, that the city can definitely um, create ways for everyone to um, be able to partake and uh, and not be prosecuted. Um, I don't know if I, I I don't think that the city has jurisdiction over APS. Like, do I want my kindergarten child's teacher uh, teaching high? You know, I, I I think there are certain jobs that have to be done sober. Uh, I will support everyone's right to partake in, in smoking or edible, or, or if you have a med card, if it's necessary. Um, so I, I believe that the city should also have policies that that support um, that support the ability of companies to be uh, flexible with all of that. Thank you. I think the question was talking about um, getting a tax incentive of some sort for people that have marijuana. I would probably be against that. When I was 16, if I could get 20 bucks, I was going to run out of it. Um, and I don't think that should be the way that people make those choices. Uh, however, I don't, you know, going off of what everybody else is saying, I don't think that. Um, I would not encourage businesses in the city of Kansas to fire people solely because they had marijuana in their system. I think that's wrong. Um, how would I encourage that type of behavior from changing? It probably start with the city. Um, the city would have to change their policies, uh, lead by example, I guess. Um, encourage other people to lead by example. I used to work for a 
necessarily a coffee shop that uh, they require you to buy smoke cigarettes. And you can legally do that. You can you can fire people if they wear purple if you want to. Um, you have that choice. There there are very few things that are protected rights. You can't fire someone because they're a man or a woman. You can't fire someone because they're black or whatever color they are, what religion they are, or what sex they are. There are a few things that you can't fire somebody for. <coughs> you, can, you can fire someone if they have added on their system, even if it's prescribed to them. That is your choice as a business owner. So, but I think that the way that we look at marijuana in people's systems should be more like people that take other medications on a regular basis, especially if it's a medication. Um, or we should look at it like tobacco. If, you know, they're smoking it recreationally. I don't think we should view it the same way that we have going back to what we talked about before. We used to view marijuana as this bad and evil thing and looking at it more than it is. Uh, so, I, I would not be for incentivized giving a tax cut to businesses just for hiring people with weed in their system. I would like the city to give incentives for hiring people that have been affected by the war on drugs. So whether they have a, a felony or some sort of charge on that, I would be in favor of giving an incentive for that issue. Uh, oh, I, this, this issue just is kind of confusing to me. If you're allowed to go home and drink or any of that, you should be able to go home and smoke weed and then go to work the next day. Until we have developed a, a breathalyzer type thing that can measure whether or not you are high at that moment, you should not be fired because you have weed in your system. Like Amy said, weed stays in your system for a week, maybe two, and so it it's, it's, makes no sense. Until we have a firm way to tell if someone is high, we can't fire them in my opinion. Uh, I'm looking forward to a few years from now when this is no longer a controversial issue, when it's just, you know, where we're not saying marijuana as this boogeyman that we're sort of figuring out how to do it, right? A lot of companies would like to stop drug testing people because it's expensive and it is hard to find people to fill some of these low wage jobs with high turnover, what they call low skilled jobs, even though all jobs require skills. Um, you know, so I, I think companies would like to do this. A lot of them would move away from the system they could. Some companies and some jobs are, are they're sort of restricted because of the nature of the work they do, that they, they cannot choose, they have to drug test people. Um, but I think this is an area where businesses are waiting for leadership from the city. You know, when the city steps up and says that, you know, they're embracing these businesses, they're embracing recreational marijuana and people's use, then companies will be much less reluctant to uh, restrict people's employment just because of marijuana use.